Howdy folks, Chuck Sheely here with Making Music Magazine. We're here again today with Sandra Wong. She's a multi-instrumentalist and uh, in the world of music as a healing element. And so she's here today to uh, share her wisdom and uh, her expertise on the subject. And uh, here she is, ladies and gentlemen, Sandra Wong. Hi there. Hi. Hi, Chuck. Thanks for having me here. You're welcome. So you're, you're visiting today from Colorado, you say? Yeah, uh, we're outside of uh, Lyons, Colorado, about uh, 15, 20 minutes from Rocky Mountain National Park. Very good. So, yeah, in the Very mountain. Good. Well, you play a whole bunch of instruments, some of which I'm sure that none of us can pronounce. So maybe <laughs> perhaps you could tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> sure. So um, my primary instrument from when I was a child is the violin slash fiddle. Mm -hmm. But about 1999, I was introduced to an instrument that I lovingly call the beast, and it is a Swedish nickel harpa. They say it more like nickel harpa, <laughs> but um, it is spelled N-Y-C-K-E-L-H-A-R-P-A. It dates back to the 1100s. And it has 16 strings, 12 which are sympathetic, and four which I bow. Three of those are keyed. Twelve of them are sympathetic, you said? Yeah, yeah. How does that work? Are they working in fourths or thirds or something? Or what, what, how, how does that stay, yeah. keep from being atonal? Do you have to be willing <laughs> to play in a certain key to gain that... Uh, you know, the, the complementariness of that or? Well, it, because it's a chromatic instrument and let me actually just grab the instrument so I can actually show you while I'm playing it yeah. or while I'm talking about it. So this, nickel this, harpa? Is, this is my nickel harpa, as I said, lovingly called the beast. And um, yeah. so essentially, well, I have my four playing strings. And then in between each of those playing strings, I have four sympathetic strings. So I actually never touch the sympathetic strings with my bow or my fingers. Mm -hmm. I have thought about trying to do some prepared instrument uh, stuff and getting little picks and trying to get in there. But essentially these sound like sympathetic string that correlates with every single note of our chromatic scale. So no matter what note I'm playing on the instrument, there's a direct sympathetic string that is resonating. And then there's a whole slew of other sympathetic resonations that are happening that have a lot to do with physics of sound, and that is not my area of expertise, but I can appreciate it. So there's this resonant quality to the instrument that starts to happen. So I love to show folks, if I dampen all four, all 12 of the sympathetic strings, and I just play the A, it sounds, it sounds like a bowed stringed instrument, but it's a little bit of a flat sound. So one more time without the sympathetics. And then if I let the sympathetics ring, So same note, same bow, same instrument, just with the sympathetics in play, you get this beautiful resonant sound. That is really what made me fall in love with this instrument. You know, I can relate to that. The, my favorite gig that I ever played was in a music store that was a guitar store. And the stage was in the store. And my view was a couple, you know, uh, was people seated in, in uh, folding chairs underneath guitars hanging everywhere. And so when we played, the whole room had that that thing. You can't really hear it, but you can definitely feel it. And um, that's a very special thing. Yeah, neat. You must have a black. I kind of want to play. I wouldn't want to have to tune it, but I sure would love to take it for a spin. It's like you're tuning it before. Like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 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 So now you use this. Uh, so so how often do you play this instrument as compared to your violin? Oh, that's an excellent question. And 
ever changing. It depends on what projects I'm involved with um, and what's called for. I tend to compose more on this instrument. Um, and I don't know whether that's because there's more something about that resonance. I, I feel like I have something to dig into. Um, and it's also, it, this one is still, even though I met this instrument for the first time in 99, it still feels newer to me. So there's something about the timbre, the, the layout. Um, and honestly, when you have all of those resonant qualities going, it's just juicy. So I think that's why I end up composing more on this instrument. It's a great yeah. way of saying it, yeah. 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 Um, so how do you, uh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't, you don't see this very much in our country. Uh, so do you work in uh, mainly solo? Do you create ensembles with other instrumentalists and things like that? Um, yes, all you know, of it's the- It's not like jazz bands call you on Thursday for a Saturday <laughs> gig, right? <laughs> Generally not with this instrument, although yeah, that instrument, yeah. <laughs> although it has been, um, it's been a, a goal to be able to play. I love the tune Joy Spring, um, and it's been a goal to be able to play it and actually improvise on that tune on this instrument. Wow. <laughs> but I'm not there yet, so I won't try to demonstrate. But. Uh, Jazz can be played on this instrument. Um, and in answer to your question, I do all of the above. And um, it, traditionally, this is really more of a solo or duo instrument. Um, mm -hmm. Within the Swedish tradition, you would have solo nickel harpa or twin nickel harpa, solo fiddle, twin fiddle. So it's only more recently within the Swedish tradition that you have bands that have guitar, bass, um, you know, fiddle, nickel, harpa, really kind of a string band, Swedish style sound. Um, in my world, uh, I end up getting called in for a lot of different projects because I'm classically trained, but I exist in the folk world as well and in the improvisational world. So. I feel extraordinarily grateful that I get to um, exist in each of those worlds. The sweet spot for me is really fusion projects that really marry a lot of those different worlds, whether it's, I, I've been involved in projects that are exploring the connection between Bach and folk music. And um, there's something that's, well, one, just fun. It's innovative and it's taking taking it outside of, of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. And there's also just the building bridges. You know, I think we see in this day and age that like classical music um, audiences have been down. And part of that is because there's generations of folks that grew up without being introduced to classical music in a meaningful way. Likewise, there's classical music audiences that haven't really been introduced to folk music in um, in a way that, that they really understand coming from the classical listening um, background. So when you can build those bridges and those connecting points and present a concert where there's something for everybody and something is everybody's hearing something new, I love that. I, and it's also just, there's so many um, musical cultures uh, on this planet. And um, it's Great. like people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, every day is a, a holiday when you discover new things. When I see yeah. somebody with an instrument like that, the first thing I think is, boy, I wish you lived down the street. I'd make you come over to my studio and I would start some of this fusion stuff. And I'd, I'd make something happen and see what, ha you know, I love to do that. You know? Yeah. But. But, Before, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, check. Uh, my mom's still in Ithaca, New York. So when I'm back at East, when we can travel again, I'll let you know. Please do. Yeah. Please do. I would love to hear that thing in person. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you play it so wonderfully as well. So, mm -hmm. so you also use this instrument um, in in sort of a, a healing music aspect. Music is a healing aspect. Or, I would say yes, 
Now, I do not have an official title as, you know, a music healer. There are people that study the actual art of music healing and get degrees in music healing. I don't know if it's a college degree, but, you know, get certified as such. Um, and that is a whole study. And I've read books about it and I know some about it. But what I will say is that my experience of music and the purpose of music is really as a healing art. So that's where that ties in. So I saw you in a concert about a month or two ago. Yeah. Um, and you had, uh, you know, it, it wasn't a traditional concert. There were people there for the benefit of the healthier auspices of what you do, it seemed like. So what was that exactly in this, in this realm? Yeah, so um, a friend and longtime fan uh, reached out to me at the beginning of the pandemic and said, Sandra, man, do we need a platform for offering people self-care and um, th just when, when they're at home? Because so many of those avenues for connecting with other people around taking care of ourselves, nurturing ourselves, um, have really mm, shifted gears and they're not as accessible because of the pandemic. And people are really needing that. So let's bring it into their homes. And so I'm creating a platform focused on offering different aspects of self-care. Would you be willing to do that? And I went, and the woman uh, who started this, her name's Julie Corbett. I'm like, Julie, yes, this is so in line with what I believe and feel is important in the world. So I joined as one of the providers for this platform. And so I have pretty free reign and I can, I do right now one weekly quote unquote class. We, we've changed the name to be Conversations and Concerts with Sandra Wong. And we really explore different aspects of creativity, of music, of life, um, all through the lens of the larger arc of what it means to take care of ourselves, which is a pretty vast and deep topic. So um, yeah, so we've covered from what is creativity how does spirit enter into the whole concept of music? Um, <laughs> so a lot of different. Well, that's a long conversation. <laughs> that's a long conversation. Yes. We have a 238 part series on that. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, okay. Well, thank you for that. Uh, can we hear you play that for our, our listeners? Absolutely. I mean, how many people get to hear? Uh, Oh, uh, 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 I forget what you called it already. Nickel Harpa. Yeah. What's it and, uh, Nickel Nickel Harpa. Harpa. Yeah, that's right. And hopefully it is still in tune. It's so worse. It sounds good. Um, so <laughs> along, <laughs> along the lines of what we're talking about in terms of healing and how music connects with that, um, just a lot of times when I'm writing, it's in dedication to something that is connected with the world that I want to see. Um, and so, oh, there's so many big concepts to try to, to, to articulate in a concise way. And I would say that for me, I experience music as a very transform transformational um, modality. You know, we as humans, feel so many things internally and it's hard to know how to process them in a constructive way so there's something about when we allow ourselves to feel that and play what we're feeling and it starts to actually move and when emotions move i think they transmute and i think we integrate our experiences in another way so i share that because i'm going to play a short short medley of three pieces that I've written that are, um, I'm playing shortened versions of them because uh, of the, the context, but each one of these was, came about as a, uh, 
out of the process that I just expressed or described. So the first one I call Remembrance, and I dedicate this one to my grandparents who have now both passed and were very, very um, pivotal. Thank you. Pivotal people in my lives and my really best friends, you know. Um, and then the second one is one that I wrote, and I'll try to give a short description of this. I was living in Santa Fe, New Mexico on 75 acres of land in a handmade adobe house where my nearest neighbors were rattlesnakes, tarantulas, and those long centipedes that are like poisonous. <laughs> and I I... some of the people I know. <laughs> Well, and what what I I was playing, and there was a uh, there was there was I think it was actually the Iraq War that was going on, and I'm sitting here with these supposedly deadly um, animals, and we're getting along. The tarantula would run across my room and then go, "Listen, you are totally welcome to be on this property, but not inside my house." And he would go outside. <laughs> and so I was like, how is it possible that I'm living peacefully with these creepy crawlies that we're should be scared of? And yet as humans who are so intelligent, so creative, um, we can't seem to really find this way to get along that is known as peace. This the second piece, which again is a very truncated uh, arrangement of a longer um, rendition of it is called A Time for Peace. And it's really a prayer that we find a way to focus constructively our creativity, our innovation, and our intellect. Yeah. So that's the second one. And then the third one is called A Singular Waltz for Dom and Phoebe. And I wrote this as a wedding gift for two of my friends when they got married. And um, for me, it just has a sense of hope that I think is kind of essential. So I hope you enjoy. And I'm wondering, can you see this okay? The nickel bar? Yeah, I can see it very well. Awesome.
Very beautiful. Very, very nice. All right. Well, that was very nice. I, I, I enjoyed that very much. Yeah, I, I love the way the resonance works on that. It sounds like you're in a big hall. <laughs> it off the instrument right off the bat, you know? Yeah. 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 It's nice. It's also interesting that there's something familiar about it, but there's something irreverent about this sound to our uh, what our Western ears are used to hearing, you know? So um, re really nice. Well, yeah. thank you so much for visiting us. Oh, and um, I hope you will look us up when you come to Ithaca. I would love to play something with you at that thing. Like how many times you get to play with somebody who plays one of those things? So. <laughs> anyway i know what to do so anyway thank you very much thank you thank so you, much Chuck. it's such a pleasure to be here sandra tell the folks where they can find you online yeah so i um have a website sandra wong music.com sandra is actually spelled s-a-n-d-r-a-w-o-n-g music um uh there's a story connected with that, but we won't worry about that. I have a Facebook page, which is also uh, facebook.com backslash Sandra Wong Music. Um, and I do have a YouTube channel. If you put in a search under my name, you can find me there. Um, it still has a weird link address, but if you do a search under me, my name, you'll find it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, folks, uh, if you had a good time, make sure you hit the like button. Go find Sandra and find out the rest of her world. Um, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, sign up for our newsletter. Find us on, uh, on all the social medias. We're, uh, we're everywhere all the time. We'll be flourishing the social media with this story here. So we hope you have a great day. We thank you for watching and keep practicing. Take care, everyone. <laughs>